Is Microsoft's new 4K wireless display adapter the best way to cast your content to a TV? Stay tuned as we find out. Welcome back. At Tech Autos, we do reviews of the latest tech gadgets and automotive products. If you're new to our channel, consider subscribing. Today we're going to review Microsoft's third generation wireless display adapter, which is the first 4K Miracast certified receiver on the market for consumers today. We're also going to compare it to other certified Miracast receiver sticks, the first and second gen Microsoft adapters, and the Action Tech Screen Beam Mini 2. We purchased the adapter at full retail price from Amazon, see the link in the description below. There are many use cases for casting screen content from a phone, tablet, or PC to a display wirelessly. From entertainment, to big screen gaming in the era of console shortages, group video chat on a TV, presentations and professional applications, mobile use cases like in-car displays, and more. Currently, there are three popular protocols for casting display content wirelessly. Apple has its proprietary AirPlay, which allows for casting from iPhones and Macs to Apple TVs and a few other devices. Google has its proprietary Google Cast, which allows for casting from certain Android phones and the Google Chrome web browser to Google's Chromecast sticks, Android TVs, and other devices. Then there's Miracast, which is an open standard and allows for almost any Windows device and most Android devices, other than Google Pixel phones, to cast screen content to a broad array of Miracast receivers. Miracast receivers are built into most smart TVs, most Windows PCs using Microsoft's free Connect app, Xbox consoles using the wireless display app, and streaming sticks like Roku's and Amazon Fire TV sticks. But the cross-vendor compatibility, performance, and reliability of Miracast links varies across those devices, and you'll get the best performance by using a standalone, certified Miracast receiver stick. In our experience, the two best consumer Miracast receivers have been Microsoft's line of wireless display adapters and the ScreenBeam line, formerly under the ActionTech brand. Microsoft released its first generation wireless display adapter in 2014, followed by a second gen model in 2016. Meanwhile, Action Tech launched its ScreenBeam Mini 2 in 2014. Today we have Microsoft's new third generation model, model 1942, whose standout feature is support for 4K resolution. The front of the box has a lot of text, as they're using the same box for English, French, Spanish, and Portuguese. On the back, we see the model number 1942. We also see an HDMI port is required, of course, and USB for power only. Now let's open the box. Here we see a pull tab at the top. Inside, we have the adapter itself, and HDMI and USB-A cables coming out of it. Let's pull it out. We'll put the adapter to the side for the moment. Here we see a manual with setup instructions. Essentially, plug the HDMI cable into your TV or monitor, and the USB cable into a USB port with sufficient power output, which most modern displays have, and switch to the respective HDMI input. Once the adapter boots, cast your device to the screen. In Windows, the shortcut is to hold down the Windows key and press K. On Android devices, the steps vary by manufacturer. To adjust the settings or update the firmware, you need the Microsoft Wireless Display Adapter app, which is in the Microsoft App Store on Windows. Here we have a warranty booklet. Moving on to the adapter itself, we have the main unit and these two connections. On the top, we see the Microsoft logo. 
On the side, we see some regulatory markings and some text showing that this is model 1942. The part number begins with UTH, with the rest varying by region. The power input is 5 volts at up to 1 amp, meaning 5 watt peak. Most monitors and TVs should provide that much from their USB ports, but if you have issues getting the adapter to work, try plugging it into a standalone USB charger or even a USB battery pack if you're mobile. Taking off the protective cap, we have the HDMI plug on the shorter end and the USB side going a bit longer. On the other side, we have a small reset button. Now let's compare the 4K adapter to its predecessor, the second gen Microsoft wireless display adapter, which is still on sale, just a bit cheaper now. The second gen model, which is model 1733, has a part number beginning with P3Q. It takes 5 volts up to 500 milliamps, so that's 2.5 watts. That's half the peak draw of the third gen model, so it should have better compatibility with USB ports on older TVs. The second gen adapter's body is in two halves, built right into the HDMI and USB plugs themselves, with a protective cap you can plug both halves into. Stretching them both out, the new model has a slightly longer span. But the second gen model comes with extension cables, both for HDMI and for USB. So if you plug in both extensions, you get a longer span in case your TV's USB port is far from its HDMI port. But that's two more pieces to carry, so the extra length in the main unit is convenient. Now comparing the adapter bodies, we see the new one is almost twice as large in area, though the thickness is identical. Let's invite the first gen Microsoft adapter and the ScreenBeam Mini 2 to our little Miracast party. Microsoft has now tried three different form factors, sticking the guts of the receiver into the HDMI side in the first gen, like a Roku streaming stick, splitting them between the HDMI and USB sides in the second gen, and making them independent of both in the third generation. The first gen Microsoft adapter was model 1628 with a part number beginning with CG4 and also drew 2.5 watts at peak. The ScreenBeam Mini 2 is more like an Amazon Fire TV stick physically. It plugs into the HDMI side and has a micro USB port for power. There is no power information printed on it, but the included AC adapter is 5 watts or 5 volts at up to 1 amp, so it's somewhere south of that. The Microsoft adapters all use premium matte black plastic and are the same thickness, with very solid build quality and all the label text in fine grey print. The screen beam has a more generic design, with glossy plastic and a big sticker on the back. It's fine, just not as premium feeling. Now let's plug them in. First up we have the second generation Microsoft adapter. This was plugged into an Acer DM431K monitor, which supports 4K at 60Hz. As expected, the adapter gives us a 1080p signal. We'll cast from a Windows PC by either opening the Action Center and tapping Connect, or just pressing the Windows and K keys, then selecting the adapter. We've installed the wireless display adapter app, but this is completely optional. You don't need any software for the adapter itself to work. Here we can set the adapter's name, which is shown on screen when you first connect, the language, and a zoom level to maximize the display on certain TVs that have a border margin. Next, we pop over to Update and Security, where we can see an update is available. Let's install it. Now we have a new UI. Let's cast to our screen now. Here we have one new option. You can pick the background wallpaper from a few preset options or load your own. Now let's take a look at the performance when mirroring our display. It's smooth in general, with just a couple of occasional momentary hiccups.
In our experience, this is a smoother, more reliable experience than casting to a Roku or Amazon Fire TV stick over Miracast or to most smart TVs. Now let's take a look at the third gen Microsoft adapter. Here we can see it already has the new UI preloaded. It also shows an option to connect the adapter to a particular Wi-Fi network. That's new, the first and second gen models only allow for a peer-to-peer -peer wireless connection directly between the source device and the receiver. This new feature is known as Miracast over infrastructure and provides a number of benefits. Let's start casting. Immediately we can see we're casting at 4K instead of 1080p. If we open the same wireless display adapter app, we see a picture of the new adapter. Next, we see the new ability to join an existing Wi-Fi network for improved performance. We'll skip that for now. Next, we see two new options. There is a quick connection option, which will pop up a notification on your PC when the adapter is ready, so you can save a few taps. Next, there is an option to connect and disconnect using the shortcut Windows Shift K. The personalization tab looks the same as with the second gen adapter, except the two new options below. Now we're going to switch from mirroring to extend mode. We're using a Microsoft Surface Book 2 with a 3x2 aspect ratio, so mirroring that on a 16x9 monitor gives us letterboxing on the sides. Using extend mode, we can get a 16x9 image filling the wireless display. It defaults to 1080p, so here we can switch it to 3840x2160, which is 4K. One limitation is that the adapter will max out at 30Hz, regardless of whether you select 4K resolution or drop down to 1080p. That's a nice jump over the 1080p 30Hz we get with all other Miracast adapters on the market, but a 60Hz option at a resolution below 4K would have been nice. In particular, 1080p at 60Hz consumes less data than 4K at 30Hz, so there's certainly enough link bandwidth for it. Hopefully Microsoft is able to add additional display modes in future firmware updates. Switching back to mirrored mode, we can see the cast image is very smooth. Even smoother at 4K than the second gen adapter is when running at 1080p. The second gen adapter in turn has lower latency than the first gen adapter. Here we'll play a YouTube video. We notice no particular hiccups with video casting at up to 4K. There is definitely more latency in the link at 4K resolution, though it's really not an issue for most use cases. Dropping to 1080p reduces latency for applications like gaming. We still might not play competitive first-person shooter games over a wireless display, as wired is always best, but it's more feasible at 1080p. Heading back to the wireless display adapter app, the third gen adapter unearths a new network tab that allows you to connect to a local 5GHz Wi-Fi network. Finally, the Update and Security tab shows us an available update. Below, there are options to set passwords and a toggle to enable or disable HDCP, or High Bandwidth Digital Content Protection, which is required to cast protected streaming video content. Here's what happens if we cast Netflix with HDCP disabled. We eventually start seeing graphical corruption. Now let's enable HDCP. So now we're able to get protected content on our wireless display. One interesting use case for wireless display casting is to get a desktop PC environment powered by a smartphone. Examples include Microsoft Continuum in Windows 10 Mobile back in 2015, which gave a desktop-like Windows shell from a Windows phone over USB-C or Miracast or Samsung's 2017 DeX environment, which does the same thing from certain Samsung Android phones over USB-C, and added wireless support via Miracast in late 2020. Subsequently, Android OEMs like Huawei and now Motorola have followed suit. Here's what happens if we use Samsung DeX on a Galaxy Note 10 Plus over Miracast when streaming to an Amazon Fire TV stick. First, we open the Miracast receiver app on the Fire Stick. Then we cast from the phone. 
Confusingly, Android OEMs make up their own names to refer to Miracast. Samsung calls it SmartView for some reason. It works, but the latency is suboptimal and makes it a bit difficult to navigate the desktop environment. As typical with the Fire Sticks, Rokus, and Smart TVs, the connection is also a bit temperamental and will sometimes drop. This is fine for a very occasional use in a pinch, but if you want a better experience, it's definitely worth investing in a standalone Miracast receiver. Keep in mind that to get 4K over Miracast, both the source device and the receiver have to support 4K. One limitation we came across is that while our Windows machines seem to cast in 4K without issue, our Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus test phone was only able to output 1080p, whether through screen mirroring or wireless DeX. This may be less of an issue in the future, but if you're expecting 4K wireless output from an existing Android device, make sure to check whether it can actually output 4K. Overall, if you don't need 4K resolution, would be happy with 1080p, and want a budget solution, the second gen Microsoft Wireless Display Adapter or the ScreenBeam Mini 2, which are both a little bit cheaper, are still decent options. At the time of filming, they're around $40 to $50 on Amazon, see the links below. The ScreenBeam also has one interesting element, which is that it supports Miracast's User Input Back Channel, or UIBC. The ScreenBeam's micro USB port can be attached to a suitable OTG Power Y cable, see the link in the description below, to give you a female USB port. If you attach a USB device, like a keyboard, mouse, or touchscreen to that port, it'll be passed through wirelessly to the device that's casting to the ScreenBeam. If you then switch between casting for multiple devices, you get the equivalent of a wireless dock or KVM switch included for free. That's a pretty unique feature that could be useful for some people. Action Tech used to sell a Continuum Edition that bundled in the cable targeted at Windows Phone users, but you can easily buy the cable separately. Incidentally, another place you can find UIBC support is in the Xbox Miracast Receiver app. If you cast from a PC to an Xbox, for instance, your Xbox controller can control the PC if you'd like. We wouldn't go any cheaper than the Gen 2 Microsoft Adapter or the Screen Beam. There are plenty of off-brand Chinese Miracast receiver sticks available online, but we'd stay away from those. They're not certified, so they may have compatibility and performance issues, and many lack support for HDCP. If you're looking for the best overall wireless display casting experience for Windows and Android devices, the third generation Microsoft 4K wireless display adapter is the way to go. It's a little bit pricier than the second gen model or the screen beam at around $70 at the time of filming, but it adds support for 4K, has a few neat new features, and in our few months of testing performs the best of the lot with better range and reliability than any other option on the market. See the links in the description below to check out the Gen 2 and 3 Microsoft receivers and the ScreenBeam Mini 2 on Amazon. If you have any questions, leave us a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, and post any comments or questions below. Also, visit our site at techautos.com for more content.